Here, in the mountain foothills of the Sonoran Desert, there exists an amazing creature with the body of a hare, There are multiple subspecies, some part deer, some part antelope. This mysterious and elusive creature has a fearsome reputation. We are of course talking about the jackalope. The epicenter of this mythological creature's range is Wyoming but sightings have been found as far north as North Dakota and as far south as Mexico. Across these hills, two whiskey enthusiasts have recently encountered the creature and resolved to catch it. Over a period of several weeks, the jackalope has crept closer and closer, a master of stealth as it hunts for its one and only weakness whiskey. Can this elusive creature be caught? I mean, yeah, it just got drunk and fell asleep. Fascinating. We can't. We can't use this. What? No, I spent time on this. I'm proud of this. All right, you spent a lot of time on it. Uh, so I guess that was our cold open. Hope you enjoyed. <laughs> we have a new uh, member of the uh, of the bar. Yeah. Now, have we named the? Uh, you know what? Comment down below. Name our jackalope for us, please. Yeah. We uh, we can't just keep calling him jackalope. I feel like that's disrespectful. Jack the lope. Jack the lope. <laughs> that's a terrible name. That's. That's, no. So today. Actually, yeah, before we get any farther, welcome back to Word the Dream. Oh yeah, I'm Red. And I'm Grim. This is your home for whiskey reviews, mythological opinions, and American tall tales. <laughs> These get sillier and sillier. <laughs> sillier and sillier. I like that we can keep coming up with them though. Like. Yeah, I mean, the barrel's gonna run dry sooner or later. No, no. All right, all no. right. We'll keep. What was that? Uh, scraping the barrel. Song? Yeah, yeah. It's Alestorm. Yeah. Alestorm. Scraping the barrel. That's what we'll be doing. I'm gonna put a card right there because that is a great song. That is a great song. Pirate metal in general is I mean, just it's just excellent. Yeah, it is a genre of music that needs more attention. Hmm. So today, what are we looking at? Who are we looking at? Boo Rai. Boo Rai. I love saying that. Yeah. You know, all right. So we were we were uh, a little confused on how it should be pronounced, but we did actually look it up. So we have it on good authority that it is actually pronounced Boo Rai. Yeah. Uh, so a blend of bourbons and rice. Mm -hmm. It's Boo Rai. It's uh, made by High West Distillery, uh, and it's a limited annual release. You know, I didn't realize like how because we've had our eye out for it. Yeah. Because we bought the Jackalope way before. Well, yeah, a long finding time. this. Um, you know, we've had our eye out for it, and I didn't realize, like, how elusive this particular bottle could be. I mean, it fits. I don't know. I mean, hopefully you guys can see the jackalope on the front, but yep. it fits the mythology. Limited sighting, I think it says. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. it this is the whole thing. I mean, the whole aesthetic from, like, the the air bubbles in the bottle to, like, the, the jackalope artwork and everything, it's just... It does have that antique glass look. Yeah. It's like, this is a bottle you would find in a saloon in some western town that Clint Eastwood is going to jump into. Yeah. So High West Distillery was founded in 2006 by David Perkins and his wife Jane in Park City, Utah. Fun fact, High West is actually the first legal distillery in Utah since 1870. That's, that's crazy. That's like mind-blowing to me. Like, <laughs> like hundreds of years have gone, well not hundreds, like 150 years have gone by and it's... Man, you're right on with the math tonight, huh? I haven't had much to drink yet. So. Mr. Calculator. <laughs> um, so David Perkins was actually a biochemist. And he discovered like an interest or love for whiskey distilling on a trip to the Maker's Mark Distillery. Okay. During That's a... Uh, right after my own. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, I thought you'd like that. I do. Um, so during a, a tour of the Maker's Mark Distillery, he kind of saw the, you know, the, the relationship between biochemistry and the action that happens when you ferment corn and wheat and rye and yep. everything together is a maker's mark. So, so kind of that, you know, chemical reaction that take place and the, 
everything that goes on there. So I, you know, thought that was interesting in the yeah, well, yeah. I was, you know, to, without that story, it's just kind of a weird jump. Like, yeah. you know, being in IT, if I decide, ah, you know, I'm going to be a dog groomer. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? In 2015, I believe, they've grown to four locations around Salt Lake City. So Park City, Salt Lake City, um, two other locations. Other Utah Salt Lake. cities. In that general region uh, of the United States. Um and then in 2016, they were named uh, Best New Distillery by, or Best American Distillery by Whiskey Advocate Magazine. Very cool. So um, they are a um, really famous for their blends. So things like the Boo Rye, which is bourbon and rye. Yeah. Midwinter's Night's Dram, which... We, your mother actually yeah, found a bottle for us. Thank you, Mama Red, uh, for finding us a bottle of that. Um, that's going to be, we're going to crack, that's going to be our Christmas special. Yeah, that's going to be our dead of winter. Like, yeah. We're going to tell Christmas stories. The dead of winter. 70 <laughs> degrees. 70 degrees in Arizona and everybody's yeah. freezing. Uh, well, you need to... We'll both be wearing jackets at that time. I don't wear jackets. I'll be wearing a winter. jacket at that time. A light sweater. I'll be a, I'll be a whiskey Mr. Rogers. Okay. We'll get you We'll get you a, like a leather sweater vest. Yeah. Why leather? Because of whiskey? Yeah. Yeah. I like it. Um, so yeah, famous for their blends. Uh, and they have a... You know, they, they grew from a small, almost like mom and pop distillery. Now they have a 1,600 gallon still, copper pot still on site that's, uh, in Park City. That's a, that's a, a lot of whiskey. It <laughs> is a lot out of whiskey. That. <laughs> um, you know, I do act, we usually, I mean, sometimes we tackle the mash bill a little later, but I do yeah. want to focus on it now because like this one in particular is actually very interesting because it is a blend of three distinct whiskeys, yeah. all aged at least 10 years. The first being 95% rye and 5% mystery, right? Yeah, 5% mystery. <laughs> they did not disclose that. Yeah. Uh, the second um, is a bourbon, 75% corn, 21% rye, and 4% malted barley. And then the second is another, or the third, I'm sorry. Second but, bourbon, third overall whiskey. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, You're picking up what I'm putting down. I got your back. Uh, so, yes, second bourbon, third overall, third overall whiskey is 60% corn, 36% rye, and again, 4% malt the barley yeah and the the ratios of which though or how those are mixed isn't known so there's there's three different whiskeys in there but the amounts that those are mixed in yeah isn't now involved. i wonder how long of a process that was to like really fine tune that yeah. and say this is what i want this is yeah. what i'm putting out um and imagine having the job of tasting it every once in a while like mm, not quite right mm. we're in the wrong line of work i, I mean this time. this right here is the right line of work yes. but our day jobs yeah. there's not enough whiskey in it mm, no there really isn't. <laughs> so I'm ready to get to porn if you're ready to get to porn. I think we should note this bottle has been poured before. Yeah. So uh, full disclosure, we've recorded, we've already done this episode and what would have been the next episode, but due to technical difficulties, we actually lost that footage. So we are doing it again. Yes. So sad we lost the footage. Happy we get to drink more whiskey. Yeah, I'm down. So... Fred side. Yeah. So we will not be pouring another shot into our infinite whiskey. However, here's a clip of the previous pour just to show, to prove that we did it. And it did go into the whiskey. Yes. This is a whiskey bottle because it's a mix of, it's a blended whiskey. Yeah. All right. Let's. It was a little quiet. It was a little quiet. Yeah. It was a little quiet. It was a little quiet. Quieter than I remember. So I think we've kind of touched on all of the high west notes. So how about some jackalope trivia? Oh, yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> so, in the Old West, uh, cowboys, at the end of the night, they'd be sitting around their campfire, eating their beans, or whatever. They, oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, they eat beans. Why not? So, they would hear the jackalopes off in the darkness, mimicking the voices of the cowboys trying to lure them out. The nefarious ones. The nefarious ones, yeah. Yeah. They're, this is a good one. Yeah. No, I mean, not, some jackalopes are benign. Yeah. So, it's important to note, I mean, there are dangers in tracking down jackalopes, um... Uh, Jackalopes will use their vocal abilities, their siren songs almost. I like that. Um, if they feel like they're in danger. Uh, they will attack if uh, cornered and provoked. If cornered. Um, there was a rumor that in Wyoming you could buy jackalope milk. But the New York Times debunked that saying that you cannot get that close enough to a jackalope in order to milk it. It's way too dangerous. <laughs> you know, if I... <laughs> Am I the only one thinking of that scene from Meet the Parents? I got nipples, Greg. <laughs> <laughs>
And again, rumor has it the best way to catch a jackalope is with a shot of whiskey and singing "Happy Trails to You" by Roy Rogers. Yeah, yeah. It just, it just calms him down. Yeah, it puts it it eases the beast's soul. I will say this guy drank an entire bottle of whiskey and just passed out, so he was very easy to catch. Yeah. So I'll tell you, the snifferizer is ready to go. I'm I got my snifferizer charged up. I can dig it. <laughs> Whew. Man, that is, it's got a, it's real, real easy, real nice on the nose. Yeah. Um, I just got a lot, a lot of just different scents coming up. There is, there's a tropical fruit there. Undertones, real low. I get like a fruitiness. I don't know if I could peg it as tropical fruit, but I do get a fruit, like a, a yeah, yeah. I don't want to mislead. Because like a lot of times, tropical fruit just means fruit with like a ton of coconut. Yeah, and there's no coconut there's no flavor. Coconut. I'm having difficulty pegging the tropical fruit. Yeah, like a pineapple. Pineapple. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm I'm just getting fruity fruitiness. Okay. But not like and I and you know how there's fruitiness in like this smells like a basket like a fruit basket and then there's fruitiness and there's this smells like fresh. Fresh. Yeah. Yeah. No, at, at one of our episodes, like, I called out, like, it's not really a fruit smell, but it's, like, that airy crispness from, like, a apple skin. Yeah. 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 Grape skin. Yeah, I know you said grape skin once. Yep. Yep. Look at that. Mine like a s- mongoose. <laughs> you almost said steel trap. <laughs> I did. You, like, what happened? <laughs> I like mongoose. The steel trap just shut tight before you got, the, got it out. <laughs> I started to say steel trap and it said no. And so I had to come up with something else. <laughs> just, I, you have a history of doing that with idioms like biff. <laughs> Make like a tree and get out of here. <laughs> anyway, um, I do get some oak. A little bit of oak. Yep. Which, um, I mean, that's to be expected with two bourbons in the mix. Yeah. And and ten years, age ten years, yeah. uh, and they're both this straight rye and straight bourbon. Yeah. So, a um, little bit of oak, a little bit of sweetness. Uh, clove, like clove, clove. That's what. Yeah. And that's again, that's really really subtle. Like everything is really well balanced. Yeah. So I get like s- sweetness and oak up front, um, and then as it fades out, it freight. So so. When I smell it, I get more of the classic bourbon up front, mm-hmm. and then as it goes up behind my eyeballs, it like transforms into rye. Like, how far back does your nasal cavity go? <laughs> I have a weird nasal cavity. I was born like six <laughs> weeks early. Like, like that chard flavor really rests on the cerebellum, <laughs> located next to your limbic system. <laughs> um, I almost get you know uh, sweetness, oak. And then that that light fruit flavor is, or that light fruit scent is kind of like a bridge, and then it goes into that clove baking spice. I got you. Yeah, like I agree. I think that's. I'm trying to take you on a journey. That's worded very well. It's tough to describe smells. Uh, speaking of journey, we have a destination here. We do have a destination. I'm ready if you are. I am super ready. Ooh. Now there's that rye, right up front. And if you remember how surprised I was at how mellow the Pendleton was for 100% rye, yeah, this is what I would expect. Yeah, um, I when it first hit my mouth, um, my brain went, "That's bourbon." Mm-hmm. And then as soon as it hit like the the back of my mouth, my brain went. No, 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 no. That's right. Yeah. I So, what I... You're right. Because that bourbon is... It, it kind of... It kind of lays the, lays the pavement for the rye to travel down the road. Yeah. You know, it... Basically it, what you're saying. It lays the asphalt for the rye to drive truck. Yep. So, that's <laughs> the same thing that I just said, basically. <laughs> mm, you know what? Before I take... I don't think I have enough to really 
This is a thing now. We're going to be doing this with all, all of our... Uh... Or I think at least one of us. Okay. I'll try it with Maybe. the second one. I don't, I don't have enough to really appreciate any difference. Um, so you mentioned on the taste. For me out front, it was caramel, oak, vanilla, and then as it moves back, it's more baking spice, spiciness. Yeah. Almost like um, like really dark caramel then. Like... Yeah, I mean, I, we kind of re- we lean on caramel and vanilla flavors pretty yeah. heavily, but I mean that's kind of a staple with whiskeys yeah. and bourbons anyway. And, and toffee's not dark caramel. I just yeah, but there's like there's that's that, what came to my mind. There's that candied sweetness. There's something something extra. Yeah, just kind of man that right. So almost co- like a, like a coffee cake almost like yeah. just something. Yeah, there's just something. There's an undertone in the background that like a spice cake. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I don't actually know what a spice cake is. You said coffee cake, and I was thinking spices, and then it came out spice cake. Did you just trick me into agreeing with something yes. without listening? That never happens. Um, <laughs> like I thought you were being real. <laughs> Knock the, that back. The drop. Knock that back. Let's go to a weird cut. We'll be right back after this word from our sponsors. We, we don't have sponsors. Not yet. <laughs> Um, man. We'll be right back. Be right back. That was a weird cut. I still haven't thought of a single thing to say (laughs) after a weird cut. (laughs) It's been like 20-something episodes. I, uh, maybe was caught off guard a little bit. I was staring out into space for a second. What space? There's a wall. 12 feet that way. Yeah, but when your mind goes blank, it looks like space. Oh, it's just the thousand yards there. (laughs) Yeah, just... (laughs) I was flying. You know what? I actually thought... Uh, when when my wife and I started having kids, that like our Christmas photos would just get worse and worse for me. Like I would <laughs> just get that like just yeah. blank stare. Like what's going like? Yeah, I'm here again. Uh, but my wife vetoed that. She said I have to look nice for Christmas photos. So as a compromise, we just haven't taken any Christmas photos. There you go. <laughs> hey, you want to take joint Christmas photos this year? What? No. No, me and you. Oh yeah. Here. Worth a dram Christmas photos. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll send them out to all the subscribers. It's a worth a dram Christmas. <laughs> all right, so back to Burai. We're talking about Burai. Uh, Burai. Our typical YouTube time travel. I ten, lost track of how much time it was. Uh, I'm going to say it's 10 minutes. Yeah. Same with the math. I got an uh, internal clock like a mongoose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you mean a steel trap? That too. <laughs> Whew. I didn't, I didn't do the Buddy Holly. You know, I feel like it's it's almost a little sweeter on the nose after resting. Yeah. Definitely mellower, which we've seen with a yeah. lot of the other whiskeys that we've tried. I'm definitely getting more of that um, caramel forward after sitting a little bit. Um, I don't know what what my what what made me reminded of this. Um, I think it's because I saw Utah on the back of here. Uh, quick tangent. Red's tangent. Um, do you want me to put a thing up there? I mean, if you want. All right. You don't have to. I can do. I can do like a like a campfire folk acoustic backing track for you. Okay. okay, cool. If you're getting into the Mark Twain thing, which I think you are, I am. So Mark Twain once wrote about uh, Utah whiskey, specifically Mormon whiskey. Um, in 1850s, um, Mark Twain wrote. And I'm paraphrasing, I'm going to get some of it wrong, you guys uh, can correct me in the comments, but wrote that Valley Tan whiskey is a whiskey, or cousin to it, made from imported fire and brimstone. Um, (laughs) And that at the time, you know, Brigham Young only allowed Mormons to drink within Valley Tan, which is a Salt Lake City, Mm -hmm. or Salt Lake area. Back then, 1850s, 1860s or so, Main Street of Salt Lake had one saloon on it. And that was the place where people would go and drink their medicinal medicinal whiskey. Uh, but it was so popular that Brigham Young renamed Main Street to Whiskey Street, which is where that saloon was. Very cool. Is it still Whiskey Street today? I actually don't know. I probably should have looked that up before I told the story. Uh, I'm going to look it up right here, and the answer is right there. What do you think, um, yes or no? I, w- I want to say no. I want to say it's back to mainstream. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say yes. Only only because of prohibition and everything else that went on. Oh, Speaking okay. of yeah, prohibition, yeah, 
Second fun fact, I don't know how many fun facts we've done. Utah was the 21st state, 36th state. Utah was the 36th state to ratify the 21st Amendment, okay. which repealed prohibition. Anyway, all right, so I think we've covered our... our a little bit sweeter on the nose. Sniffing. I still get the um, that, that clove, that baking spice on the back end, but... I'm ready, I'm ready to taste it. Yeah, let's do it. Damn. You know that that crunchy flavor feel that I was, it's butterscotch. Yeah. That's what I was trying to peg earlier. Yeah. I get it. Uh for me it's almost like after it's been sitting it's a little bit more rounded. Yes. And that 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 butterscotchiness comes forward a little bit more. Um because I wouldn't have been able to peg that on the first glass. I don't think. Well, so. I struggled with it. Yeah. Um but then coming back to it like that's it's right up at the top. Yeah. Like that, you know, we were the kind of that blanket term that we've been falling back on, that caramel vanilla. Yeah. Just the bourbon flavor. Um, I think just we were stuck on that term a little bit, but then after letting it rest and then coming back to it. Yeah. Thinking about it. Yeah. I think it's it's a, it's much more easily identifiable. Let, letting my tongue think about it a little bit. You know that almost waxy flavor you get with walnuts or un untreated nuts yeah <laughs> we are keep it together <laughs> we're, we're can not, we can we're we get through high school are we? can we get through one episode <laughs> where we can say the word nuts in any context without breaking character no <laughs> no we really can't I read untreated nuts you bust at the mention of every nut <laughs> When you get a bag of baking nuts, pecans, pecans have a little bit stronger actual flavor, but walnuts, almonds, they don't have any <laughs> Sorry, salt. Sorry, can we, just, they don't have can we any... just assume we're talking about like a cup of nuts and yes. not a nut bag? <laughs> <laughs> Why is this so hard for us? <laughs> we're grown men. No. <laughs> Physically. <laughs> Physically. All right. Maybe not mentally. But no, I, I do get, I, I know what you mean. Like it's... There's some of that after it's been sitting, is that... I'm going to laugh again when I say it. Waxing nutness. <laughs> I think you mean a Brazilian. <laughs> Are we on the final thoughts? I'm not done with my glass yet, but... Uh, yeah, I think we're... I think yeah. we've... We haven't really touched on any I'm impressions. Say this is Mark Twain approved, just from... Posthumously yeah. Mark Twain approved? I'd say, yeah, probably. Because yeah. he approved of the Valley Tan whiskey. True. So... Um, so... I, I think impressions are going to be pretty simple here because it is, I personally, I think this is a very, very fine sipping whiskey. Oh, definitely. Um, um, I can't think, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I mean, one, for the price point, two, for the, for the flavor, yeah. I wouldn't mix this ever. I no. wouldn't even, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even try an old fashioned. I think it's, it's perfect as it is. 100% agree. Did we touch on the price? No, I, no, we didn't. Um, being a limited release, I picked this up for seventy-eight dollars, and that's yeah. here. That's for Arizona. I would say about eighty dollars is what you'll typically find you'll spend on it. Okay. Um, and so that I mean that is a premium whiskey. Yeah. So anyway, hey, we haven't done the banner yet. Give me the fanfare. Right there. Well, yeah. Yeah. I, I honestly, if you're a fan, <laughs> this is one. If you're a fan of bourbon, if you're a fan of rye. And you can you see it on the shelf, and you have the ability to pick it up. I would pick it up for sure. Yeah, at least once. Yeah, at least, um, I mean, we've said that for a few over the past couple of weeks. Like it's worth trying at least once. Yeah. And again, this is one of them. You know, it's. Uh, I don't think that one bottle will disappoint anybody. Yeah. Um, I think we said that about Booker's, right? Like, if you're a fan. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Go go pick it up. At you least once. It, yeah. At least once. I think this is the same. This is the same. I think you owe it to yourself as a fan of whiskey to try this out. All right, comment down below. Uh, we've also asked on Instagram, I think, what we should name our uh, our jackal. Yes, so. we did. So we were actually. So we're, I think more and more we're becoming active on Instagram. So please check us out there. Like we actually yeah, post definitely. a lot of exclusive pictures there and some yeah other we do stuff. Uh, Facebook doesn't actually like you to post a whole lot if you were a content producer. Yeah, which is I think is funny. Um, so Instagram is where we post a lot of those unique pictures. Yeah. Unique things. 
So that all being said, uh, like and subscribe here. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Not and Twitter. Not Twitter. But no matter how you like your whiskey, that's the right way. Right.